and he saw Liège, 66.6 six kilometers. That was, that was frightening. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for circumstances so eerie and so unlikely that they send a slight chill up your spine. Look what we made. Number 20, Flight 666 flew into hell on Friday the 13th. <laughs> Airports around the world are represented by three-letter codes. The code for Helsinki Vanta Airport, the primary airport of Finland's capital, is hell. Finavia, the airport's owner, has had fun with the initials. In October of 2017, they had a PR campaign, hashtag life in hell. It was a mixed media campaign with TV and online content. They even had a well-known Chinese actor spend a month living at the airport. Three days after the launch of the campaign, on Friday the 13th, Finnair's regular flight 666 from Copenhagen flew straight to hell. There was no bad luck to be found, but what a way to tempt fate. Number 19, November 9th, the German Day of Fate. Mark Twain once said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Germans know that Twain was right. Dating back to 1848, many history-shaping events of German history all occurred on the same day. November 9th is so significant in Germany, they have a name for it, Schicksalstag, or the Day of Fate. On November 9th, 1918, Kaiser Wilhelm II abdicated the throne, ending the 500-year reign of House Hohenzollern. Just a few years later, Hitler's failed Beer Hall Putsch ended on November 9th, 1923, launching his political career. In 1938, on November 9th, the SS launched Kristallnacht a violent pogrom against the nation's Jewry. It's not all dark history, however. November 9th, 1989 saw the fall of the Berlin Wall. It has been an astonishing day. Hour after hour, all through today, thousands and thousands of West Germans have come to the wall to see for themselves. Number 18, the graves of the first and last World War I casualties face each other. World War I was the bloodiest war in the history of England. The Battle of Somme, for instance, claimed more British lives than every single post-World War II British battle combined. The nation lost 6% of its total male population to the war. Many of those fallen soldiers rest in St. Symphorian Military Cemetery. However, there is an odd and unplanned coincidence with their graves. The first British casualty of the war was a young man named John Parr. The last was 30-year-old George Edwin Ellison. Parr and Ellison both lie at St. Symphorian seven yards apart and facing one another. Private John Parr, the first British soldier killed, is buried here. So is George Ellison, the last shot an hour before the ceasefire took effect. Their graves act as somber bookends to a tragic chapter in their nation's history. Number 17. The Civil War began and ended on the same man's property. The first shots of the American Civil War rang out at Fort Sumter, South Carolina. It wasn't a battle, per se. There were only 85 defenders, and the few casualties came from an accident during the surrender. The first pitched battle occurred later, with the first Battle of Bull Run in Manassas, Virginia. It was named for a stream that ran through the farmland of a grocer named Wilmer McLean. The battle was fierce and bloody, revealing to the country just how horrific a protracted war on American soil would become. After the battle, McLean fled his home to find safety. He moved to Appomattox, Virginia. Four years later, Robert E. Lee incidentally surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant in the parlor of McLean's Appomattox home. Number 16. Major Summerford defied the odds in the worst way imaginable. Walter Summerford, a British major during World War I, was sent home from the front in Belgium in 1918. He wasn't hit by a bullet or a mortar shell. Summerford was struck by lightning. He was temporarily paralyzed from the waist down and sent back home. Six years later, while fishing in a local river, Summerford was struck by lightning for a second time. Again, Summerford had to rehabilitate from temporary paralysis. Fast forward another six years, and the Major's luck ran out. He was hit by lightning a third time during a stroll in the park. He struggled for two years in a hospital bed before succumbing. Four years after that, his tombstone was struck by lightning. That's four strikes, one every six years. Did I ever tell you, I've been struck by lightning seven times. Once when I was repairing a leak on the roof. Number 15, the comets hit by a meteor. Meteor shower, take evasive action. What's evasive action? It's when you get out of the way of something. 
What exactly am I supposed to get out of the way of exactly? I have no idea. All it says is take evasive action. There is a reason why meteors are incredibly valuable. Many meteoroids break up in the atmosphere after hurtling through space for millions or billions of years. According to National Geographic, the chances of getting hit by a meteor are approximately 1 in 1.6 million. In 2011, one meteoroid fell to Earth and landed on a house in France. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Danny, here! Danny, hurry up! It's safe! Danny, Ford, hurry! Danny, Ford, hurry up! This sort of event was newsworthy thanks to its unlikelihood alone. However, there is an odd wrinkle to this particular story. The home was owned by the Comet family. Number 14. Anthony Hopkins and the girl from Petrovka. I'm very fortunate, very lucky. I sometimes pinch myself, think, how did it happen? But I think, well, you know, that's the way it is. It's an opportunity, luck, and goodness knows what it is. Maybe a little bit of talent. In the early 1970s, Anthony Hopkins' career was stalling. He hoped to jumpstart it with an audition for The Girl from Petrovka, an adaptation of an American novel. Hopkins was desperate for a break and wanted to be as prepared as possible. He frantically searched for the novel, but learned it wasn't yet available in the UK. Despondent, he went to the subway and sat on a bench to wait for the train. He noticed a bound manuscript on the bench next to him. The blue and the dim and the dark cloths of night and light and the half-light. One for the exact book he was searching for. He got the part and a year later met the author on set in Vienna. He then learned that the author had lost that same copy in a stolen car. She calls him a little hamster, feeding him all the crumbs, forcing him to survive. Number 13, The Curse of the Omen. It was an aura of, of not being welcomed. I mean, the devil was really, I really sincerely believe that the devil didn't want the picture to be made. Horror movies like The Exorcist are famous for having productions plagued with creepy tragedies. Few such movies appear to be as cursed as 1976's The Omen. Both before and after the film, the cast and crew began to suffer strange accidents. Star Gregory Peck's son took his own life after Peck took the role. <laughs> Special effects guru John Richardson oversaw the film's death scenes. On his next gig, he and his girlfriend were in a car crash where she died in a manner similar to one death in The Omen. Both screenwriter David Seltzer and executive producer Mace Neufeld were on airplanes struck by lightning. It's hard to discount the possibility that the film was in fact cursed. He says, if you guys go ahead and make this movie before you are done, you will believe the devil exists. Number 12, Stephen Hawking's Birthday and Death Day. We will discover new structures when look at the universe on smaller and smaller scales. Stephen Hawking was one of the most famous physicists and cosmologists of the 20th and 21st centuries. He built on the work of astronomers and mathematicians going all the way back to Galileo. He deepened our understanding of the Big Bang, black holes, and time. Coincidentally, Hawking was somewhat famously born on the 300th anniversary of Galileo's death. Adding to the creepy and bizarre symmetry, Hawking died on the birthday of Albert Einstein. It was as if the universe was determined to inextricably link three men responsible for our understanding of the cosmos. Does that mean that there is a universe out there where I am smarter than you? Yes, and also a universe where you're funny. Number 11, John Wilkes Booth's brother saved Abraham Lincoln's son. So that moment where the whole future looked like it had finally lifted, the clouds had separated, comes crashing down. Robert Todd Lincoln, the only of the president's children to outlive his parents, himself had a long and storied career. Lincoln was at one time the Secretary of War, as well as the U.S. Ambassador to the U.K. That may never have happened if it weren't for the intervention of a good Samaritan. This is just a clumsy attempt at discouragement. I've been to army hospitals, I've seen surgeries, I went and visited the malaria barges with Mama. Lincoln was in New Jersey waiting for a train in the middle of a crowd. He slipped and fell onto the platform. Thankfully, an onlooker managed to pull Lincoln back onto the platform in time to avoid the oncoming train. That man was Edwin Booth brother to the man who would ultimately kill Lincoln's father, John Wilkes Booth. Coincidentally, Lincoln was also present at the assassinations of Presidents Garfield and McKinley. I want to be useful, but now, not afterwards. I ain't wearing them things, Mr. Slade. They never fit right. Number 10, the beginning and end of life. Should we go buy one of those? Yeah, I was probably gonna... Probably gonna go back later? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Life magazine helped define popular American culture in the 20th century. It was ubiquitous on shelves of every magazine stand, waiting room, and grocery checkout in the country. The first issue of the magazine as we currently know it was published on November 23rd, 1936. The first interior photo in the magazine's history was a picture of a baby being cradled by his doctor after being delivered. The caption read, Life Begins. That baby was George Story, who himself ultimately grew up to become a journalist. Decades later, on April 4, 2000, Life magazine announced that it would stop publication. Story died of heart failure a few days later. When I was growing up, uh, that was, you know, you looked at Life magazine and that was, that was how you saw the world. Number nine, a Dutch cyclist and plane crash dodger. Martin de Jong is a former professional cyclist from Holland. His career peaked in 2014 with a first place win in stage four of the Tour of Thailand. What makes de Jong's life remarkable is not his career, instead he's known for his shockingly good luck. The same year that de Jong won the aforementioned race, two separate Malaysia Airlines flights crashed. One, Flight 370, went missing. The other, Flight 17, was shot down over Ukraine by Russia. De Jong was allegedly planning to be on both flights. In the case of Flight 370, he decided to take a flight earlier in the day. With Flight 17, he ultimately chose a cheaper flight home. Number eight, Bruce and Brandon Lee in Game of Death and the Crow. This I, I'm sure you'll remember. You killed them. On Halloween. Despite Bruce Lee's incredible fitness, he died suddenly at the age of 32 due to an allergic reaction to painkillers. Lee was in the middle of a movie production, filming Game of Death. The film was rewritten and partially reshot with a double in order to finish. In one scene, a prop master on a film set explains to a group of extras how to use a prop gun. Gentlemen, these are blanks. Only aim upward. There's a wad of paper that comes out and can injure someone. One of them replaces a blank with a real bullet to try and kill Lee's character. The scenes are eerily reminiscent of the death of Lee's son, Brandon, decades later. While shooting The Crow, Brandon Lee died when a prop gun was misloaded. That film, too, was recut and partially reshot in order to finish. <laughs> Number seven. Hitler and Napoleon. Was nach diesem Kampf übrig bleibt, sind ohnehin nur die Minderwertigen, denn die Guten sind gefallen. In all of history, only Napoleon Bonaparte and Adolf Hitler have come close to conquering all of Europe. What is creepy is that their lives, rises to power, and falls mirror each other incredibly well. Separated by 120 to 130 years, their journeys were strikingly similar. <laughs> Both were born in a country different from the one that would come to rule. Both seized power in a former superpower weakened by defeat in a previous war. They both utilized shockingly effective new military tactics to quickly conquer their neighbors, leaving England isolated and alone. Each leader was weakened by resistance movements in the territories they conquered, and ultimately they were each undone by a poorly conceived invasion of Russia, each defeated by the bitter cold. Reichsleiter, this is passiert. Number six, James Dean's death and his cursed Porsche. Like Marlon Brando, James Dean was a method actor of the new school. I mean, I don't want to hurt him, but then I don't, I don't know what to do anymore except maybe die. Between his good looks and his intense performances, the sky was the limit for his career. Unfortunately, he died in 1955 while driving his brand new Porsche 550 Spyder. There were many odd and spine tingling coincidences surrounding the crash. Dean was with fellow actor Alec Guinness when the car was delivered. Guinness took one look at the machine and allegedly said, quote, please never get in it. It is now 10 o'clock, Friday the 23rd of September, 1955. If you get in that car, you will be found dead in it by this time next week. And I said, look, I won't join your table unless you want me to, but I must say something. Please do not get into that car. End quote. Pieces of the car would later get resold and caused multiple further accidents and two fatalities. Number five, author Morgan Robertson predicted the Titanic. In 1898, author Morgan Robertson wrote a novella called The Wreck of the Titan or Futility. 
His fictional Titan is a British passenger liner marketed as the largest and most unsinkable ship in the world. On its maiden voyage to America in the North Atlantic, on a cold April night, the Titan strikes an iceberg on the starboard side. Possibly due to the hype around the Titan's unsinkability, the vessel doesn't have enough lifeboats. Colonel, are there any boats on that side? No, miss, but there are a couple of boats all the way forward. This way, I'll lead you. Most of the passengers and crew do not survive. 14 years later, an actual ocean liner suffered a virtually identical fate. So many of the details down to the ship's name, Titanic, mirrored Robertson's book to a T. There were 20 boats floating nearby, and only one came back. Number four, JFK may have predicted his own assassination. What did the bullet sound like? On November 22, 1963, all of the United States came to a standstill with the news that President John F. Kennedy had been assassinated in Dallas. Nine years later, two of his closest friends and aides wrote a memoir about JFK titled Johnny We Hardly Knew Ye. In that book, authors David Powers and Kenneth O'Donnell describe the events of that November morning. And the crowd is absolutely going wild. This is a friendly crowd in downtown Dallas as the president and the first lady pass by. Jackie Kennedy had seen an anti-JFK ad in a local newspaper that was designed to resemble a funeral notice. It shook her terribly. The president allegedly responded, quote, We're heading into nut country today, but Jackie, if somebody wants to shoot me from a window with a rifle, nobody can stop it, so why worry about it? End quote. All the demands I made to honor him, it wasn't for Jack or his legacy. Number three, the Hoover Dam tragedies. The Hoover Dam was one of the greatest American engineering marvels of the 20th century. At the time, it was the largest hydroelectric plant on Earth. Even today, it provides electricity for over one million Americans in three states. Construction took five years between 1931 and 1936, but plans for the dam began in the early 1920s. It was a massive undertaking and one that ultimately cost the lives of 112 men. The second death associated with the dam occurred on December 20th, 1922, when surveyor John Gregory Tierney drowned in the Colorado River. The final death occurred exactly 13 years later on December 20th, 1935. The man who died that day was Tierney's son, Patrick. Number two, predicting Pearl Harbor. We got high level bombers, they're gonna bust this hangar wide open. Grab the 50s, let's move! Mere weeks leading up to the attack on Pearl Harbor, a peculiar set of advertisements for a board game ran in the New Yorker that sparked a short lived conspiracy theory. The ad was for a game called The Deadly Double, and in hindsight, was filled with what seemed to be warnings for the aerial strike. The word warning was written on the promotion itself and featured an illustration of people playing the dice game in an air raid bunker. Arguably the strangest synchronicity was the numbers on two of those dice being 12 and 7, corresponding to the date of the attack. The theory was investigated, but it was revealed that these ads truly were nothing more than coincidences. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number one, one man survived both Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I was telling my company supervisor in Nagasaki that one bomb had destroyed all of Hiroshima. He told me I was crazy. Just as he said that, Tutsomu Yamaguchi was a Japanese draftsman for Mitsubishi. In the summer of 1945, he was on an extended business trip to Hiroshima. On August 6th, the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on the city. Yamaguchi saw the plane fly by and drop the bomb. He was lucky. While he suffered severe burns, he survived in a shelter with colleagues. The next day, he returned to his home city of Nagasaki. Three days after surviving a nuclear bomb, Yamaguchi was at work describing the experience to his boss when the second bomb fell. He was again far enough away from the blast to survive, suffering radiation poisoning with a week-long fever. He died at the age of 93 in 2010. He was in his office with his supervisor and colleagues. 
And at that moment, the Nagasaki bomb blasted. Did a twist of fate leave a creepy coincidence off our list? Let us know in the comments below. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.